Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And this is the series I'm putting together where we are taking the XR-5 Vanguard from Earth out to Vesta. And I probably am picking a really terrible time to resume this series because I can hear a lot of thunder outside. So fingers crossed that the uh, power doesn't go out. All right, let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump back into the mission. So yesterday I ran out of time, so I had to do a quick save and then exit out of, of Orbiter. <laughs> and I think I may have to set my plan up all over again because I don't know if I have what I need at this point. So in fact, I'm just going to plan on redoing it. So I'm going to bring up going to bring up interplanetary on this side and I'm gonna to go to menu configuration turn off nodal regression and yeah let me go to the course program target intercept click set and I'm gonna target Vesta and I remember the date that I ended up with was around six zero nine eight nine I want to say <clears throat> Yeah, that's really close, because I remember it was right around 11.11 or 11.10, something like that. So this is really close. And then I did a bit of an adjustment until the EIN was zero, even though the total delta V wasn't optimal when the EIN was zero, but I decided that was probably the better choice. So a bit of an adjustment, and... Okay, yeah, there we go. So this is basically, this is basically what we had. All right now on this side I'm going to go and let me just unshare and reshare just to make sure everything is fresh and then orbit eject on this side and we want to connect orbit eject with our plan so instead of higher orbit we're going to go to course so there we go now I can leave it at this go page auto burn and be done but I was reviewing my IMFD training with Dimitri, so I want to see if I can maybe do a little bit better by using the um, IMFD's map program, and it's a fairly convoluted process, but but I think I got it down. So what I want to do is um, I now that I have orbit eject on this side, and these are connected. So if I come over here and bring up orbit eject. I now have a copy of orbit eject you know like I kind of think of it as you know the, the yeah this is now a copy so now on this side if I come over here and unshare just by putting in the node so now it's unshared and now I can bring up the course program on this side go into the Delta velocity program and my notes I put that we need to reference Earth and it will select our vessel automatically and if it doesn't then we just need to go to the source here and just put in like X and that'll select our vessel as the source and now I just want to more or less copy the orbit eject so I'm going to go over to the burn vector and I'm going to go to TEJ over here and I'm going to set my eject time according to the time to the burn, which is 4590, enter. And then I can just copy my delta velocity elements over to the side. So set 4347, we don't have to worry about decimal points because all this is gonna change anyway. Plane change 916 and inward is going to be, let's call it negative 110. All right, now, now I have the delta velocity program set up so that it's copied the orbit eject. Now I can go into menu, and I now want this side to inherit the delta velocity program. So I'm going to share side one 
with side zero, but I'm telling side one I want it to get information from side zero. Now I'm going to go to the map program and change my projection. I'm going to target Vesta. And I want to turn on the display lines. I'm going to turn off auto zoom. Go over to the page, turn on the SOI and plan. And when I click plan, it grabs the plan. Well, it's the map program is now using the delta velocity plan. Now I want to select the page, page three, but I only have two pages here, one and two. But I think the reason I'm missing the third page is because I don't currently have a an intercept, uh, not even close. It's just my intercept with Vesta is not even close. So in order to get that third page, I just need to come over here and mess with my variables enough to stretch my orbit out to the orbit of Vesta. And I can probably do that with um, prograde initially. So yeah, I'm just going to put in some prograde. And I think when I cross the orbit of Vesta, this will give me the third page. Or maybe it's Maybe it's when the AU comes lower. I'm not actually sure, but I'm pretty sure as long as I... Okay, there it is. So yeah, at some point there, maybe it was when that box hit the orbital altitude of Vesta. So now I'm going to select over to page 3, and now I have what I need to know. So the PEA is the distance between... It's basically the closest approach, like to use TransX terminology. So I'm going to add in some more... scared me. <laughs> I can be a bit jumpy sometimes. Um, I'm going to add in some more delta velocity, some more forward until the PEA won't go any lower. And then, and then it becomes a game of, you know, inward, outward, plane change, all that stuff that we're used to. And yeah, it looks like about right there is about as low as the PEA is getting just by using forward velocity. So now... Let's try plane change. Okay, that's helping. It's a lot of plane change. It's a lot of plane change. But it's not really driving up our overall cost terribly. But let me leave it at that for a moment. Let me come over here to inward outward let me maybe go down to a 10 adjustment I'm gonna see if I can take out some of that okay that's not really helping so let me just kind of leave that where it's at let me come back to forward velocity and okay so now it looks like I need to take out some of the forward velocity so let's do that well actually I took out too much got a bit too aggressive there with it all right so we'll leave it at that now back to plane change and I'm just going to add in some plane change until, you know, it's not really going any lower. And hopefully we don't drive our cost into the, up to the moon. But we knew it was going to cost around like 5.5 five or something like that. According to, uh, I am surprised it's requiring that much plane change, though. That actually really bugs me. I'm sure I'm, there's going to be a, a better way to do this, but I'm trying to... Okay, trying to figure out some of these things on my own and then I'll ask Dimitri to kind of review what I'm doing here and say what was I doing wrong what could I have done better but yeah it looks like it's mostly plane change that's getting us there so I do remember if we center on how do we do this it's like P Vesta and then if we zoom in Yeah, there's something we can do here that will help us align, but I don't know that I can really remember what all of it was. But let's come back here for a moment and go down to a 10 setting. Alright, so let's take out some delta velocity. It's bringing down our closest approach. Okay, down to about 344 now. 
Let's see what we can do with this inward outward. So taking away some of the inward that was added is helping things a little bit. And then adding in a little bit more forward velocity. Now it looks like we can take out some plane change. And we kind of have this visual here. You can see it's getting closer to, you know, Vesta, so we can use that. Taking out some of that plane change. Let's see if we can remove any of the <clears throat> the N word. Yeah, we can take out some more of the N word. And we're almost there. Not sure why we just lost, why our plan just changed, but. All right, let's see. Maybe that just means we're hitting it. Not sure. No, it shouldn't mean that because it will give you a negative number. So. So it's really sensitive there. Well, I also, I'm on a 10x, so. Let me try to go to a 1 at this point. So that's helping. Alright, that's throwing me off. Like, I don't understand what's happening at that point. Yeah, you know, why do I just lose my plan? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember seeing that before. Alright, so we'll have to just go to that point and leave it. About right there and then see if we can do anything else with our nothing we can do here all right so last one can we take out or add in that's not really doing anything so I guess I'm gonna try 10 again and just see what happens if I add in more? So we kind of come out the other side at some point. Yeah, I don't understand what's happening there when we just lose all of our data and there's no screen to select between. Yeah, I don't know. But I think I'm just going to leave it like this because... Um, because I just I don't know what's happening at that point and I'm guessing that we're you know this maybe is our our best that we can do so and more we're gonna have to do a mid-course correction of some kind because I don't really know my way around this MFD very well all right so um, yeah let's just plan on doing the auto burn now let me do a quick save here just in case auto burn and let's go ahead and warp time forward. Just, yeah, radiators out. Yeah, should be good to go on the auto burn. All right, so I'm gonna warp time forward. Hands off. IMFD will take us down to a hundred time warp, and then down to ten, and then at 180, it'll orient. It'll do the burn, and we'll see where we are on delta v after the burn's over. Maybe if we burn through all of our fuel modules we can eject all 33 or 30 how many ever there are and that will lighten up the vessel by uh, you know 33 times 4,000 let's actually see so okay we burn through 20 21 22 23 24 yeah and we're going through them pretty quick so we're still at 10x time warp I think one thing we can do, we can turn off the plan and just center self. And yeah, we can see our orbit growing out the Vesta. And our 
PEA getting closer and closer to Vesta. Mm. A bit off there. So 283.6 M according to according to IMFD. I'm sure, you know, if I knew my way around the MFD better, we, we could have done better than that. But I think also just the fact that Vesta is one of those, you know, fairly small uh, bodies in the in the solar system, you know, we're not we can't really expect to do as well as we could with like Mars. But let's see, so we have burned through 32 of our tanks. So that means they're almost all empty. So I think we can probably start getting rid of some of them at least. So yeah, the only So 32 is empty. Everything up to 32 is empty. Well, so every all of level 1 and level 2 are empty. So at the very least we could get rid of that row. And that row, we still can't get rid of that row or that one because these all still have fuel in them. So let's go ahead and try that. Offline. So it would not be unrealistic in my opinion to get rid of get rid of these because they're not in the way of anything. Okay, so we know these are empty. Okay, I guess I have to select it then deploy. Payload deployed. 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 Yeah, that one still has fuel on it. And these are full. Information. APU running. I guess we could get rid of... Well, 1 and 2 are locks. But 16, which should be that one, is empty. Payload deployed. And it's not in the way. You know, it's not being blocked by anything. 11 is empty. Payload deployed. 6 is empty. Payload deployed. 20 is empty. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. Payload deployed. And then this inner row here we can also get rid of. Because it... Let's see if we can tilt the camera in a way. Mm, let me cheat and look outside. Yeah, so that's what I thought. So this row here and that row there is also not blocked by anything. So it's realistic to get rid of these as well. Payload deployed. Information deployed. APU running. Payload deployed. So essentially all we'll have left deployed. is just that center column. Payload deployed. But you can Payload deployed. You know, do the math here. Each Payload time I do this, deployed. I'm getting rid of 4000 kilograms. Now, these are locks, so so I'm not getting rid of those. Now, these are all empty, 3 8 13 and 18, but those are down there and they're blocked by these. So that's one thing I don't think is very smart about the way this vessel uses its fuel. It should use the fuel from the uh, well, I mean, it would make sense to use the one, the fuel from the bottom, but it should drain from top to bottom, and it doesn't seem to do that. Let me turn off the APU for a moment, do a little bit of time warp just to give some separation, come out of time warp, and turn the APU back on, close APU up the payload doors, offline. time warp to speed up that animation, back to real time, turn off the APU. All right, so we've just dumped, you know, count all those out times 4,000. That's how much mass we just got rid of. So, you know, we've lightened up our vessel substantially, which will increase our overall delta V. Let's go ahead and switch camera views here to the overlay. And that's going to wrap it up for this part. So we've completed our eject burnout to Vesta. And when we come back in the next part, 
we will time warp out and probably do one or two mid-course corrections and uh and that'll probably be it for the next video and then from there you know we'll see about getting over to vesta and landing so that's going to wrap it up i'll see you in the next part